I recently came into some money and bought a new printer. No, not that printer. That printer can go fuck itself in the toner. I mean this printer. And naturally, the first thing I did after getting it was log on to Reddit and watch videos of pit bulls biting small children. But while I was doing that, I came across this post by someone named Ape Jizz. It's the coolest thing I've seen in a while. It's like a tiny airfix kit and it turns into a small jeep and you can even use the leftover plastic as sandwich filling. After seeing this, I thought I should make a kit card like this but for something I really Really like. My immediate first thought was boobies. So I spent some time googling boobies and well, one thing led to another and somehow I ended up watching porn for 7 hours straight. I was deeply saddened by this setback and started looking around my desk for inspiration and found these Beyblades that I had put there just a few minutes ago because I wanted to make this bullshit story seem believable. Anyway, I wanted my Beyblade kit card to be something anyone with a 3D printer could just print straight away. No supports, no weird settings, no sacrificing baby lemurs, none of that shit. But I also wanted this to be something that I could expand upon in the future and make new parts for. So I decided on this 3 part setup. Those are four parts. Am I illiterate? Anyway, there's a top bit that makes contact with other Beyblades and then there's a weight disc which is just a regular 22mm skateboard bearing. When you take bearings out of someone's skateboard, don't forget to replace them with lifesavers or polos, whichever ones you have at home. Other than these parts, there's also a core which holds everything in place. And finally, we have our tip, which dictates how the Beyblade will move in a stadium. My first design is a classic. It's based on Dragoon from the plastic generation of Beyblade blades and it's supposed to be an attack type with a flat tip which basically means that it runs around the stadium like a chihuahua on crystal meth and then quickly dies like a chihuahua on crystal meth. Don't ask me how I know that. I modeled everything in Fusion 350 which is like Fusion 360 but it's a computer virus instead. But anyway, after this I went through a few iterations to find out what clearances were to make this a friction fit design which means no screwing is to be done. I am unfortunately an expert on that subject. After that, the finish line was in sight, and I was basically left with what was supposed to be the easiest part of them all, the launcher. And boy was I in for an unpleasant surprise. But before I tell you the rest of the story, I would like to threaten you. I will feed your high school diploma to my neighbor's kid if you don't like and subscribe right now. And trust me, that boy's got a taste for legal documents. He ate my birth certificate last week and now I'm legally not a person. Anyway, back to the video. Okay, about the launcher. At first, First I thought, oh, it's just two fucking rotating prongs and a plastic stick with teeth on it. Should be simple enough, right? Wrong. It took me so fucking long to get this right. At one point I actually started crying. First issue was the body of the launcher. I wanted this to be as small as possible because I really wanted it to be a choking hazard for medium sized kids and pets. And also because I wanted to include the launcher and ripcord on the sprue. But with smaller launchers and my ET the extra testicle sized fingers, it just did not work. The spinning part of the launcher would always hit my fingers while I was pulling the ripcord and fuck up the launch. So I said, okay, let's make it bigger so we can have a dedicated grip for the launcher. So I made this. Then I found out that the reason for all those failed and jerky launches was not just my fingers. It was also that the teeth on the ripcord and the gear were too small and if you jammed it even once in the launcher, they would just shear right off and make the whole thing unusable. So I made the teeth bigger but then I found out that the fucking launcher tilts and causes more jams due to the force of me pulling the ripcord. Because unfortunately, I'm not inspector fucking gadget so I don't have fucking pliers for hands. So I made it thicker so that I can grip it better. After this, I found out that even with those new bigger teeth for the gears and a thicker body, the whole thing was moodier than a teenage inkjet printer. Because with certain filament colors, I don't fucking know why, it would print great and the whole assembly would work perfectly. But with some other filaments, it would work about as well as a soggy burrito would as a machete and would jam constantly. Recently. And the weird part is that all of these filaments were PLA, which as I've recently learned is not short for plastic, but in
instead it's an abbreviation for potentially leaky asshole which doesn't sound right but if the internet says so then i guess it's true but anyway after this last failure i was genuinely tired i was this close to giving up on this project but then i remembered that inspirational scene from transformers 2 where bumblebee gets his gender reassignment surgery reversed and optimus prime is like so bumblebee are you a former trans transformer now and then Bumblebee rips Optimus Prime's exhaust pipe clean off. <laughs> that always makes me laugh. Anyway, where was I? Yeah, so, launcher! I redesigned the whole thing, while the shape may be similar to the last version, but this is a completely different launcher. I swear, I'm not trying to pull an Apple move here, this is legitimately a new launcher. It's got a new gear profile, new studs, sturdier rip cord, and a simpler two-prong attachment for the spinny part of the launcher. And it works, I don't know how, but it just works perfectly. Like it works almost as good as a real Hasbro launcher, which is fucking amazing. Now that that part was done, I wanted to start working on the sprue. I tried two different arrangements for the sprue and out of those two this one seems slightly better. Oh and I also designed a second kit which is based on black Dronzer owned by Kai. This one's supposed to be a stamina type Beyblade and has a sharp red tip that closely resembles a dog's penis now that I think about it. That is unfortunate. But anyway, this tip is going to make it spin for a relatively longer time. Now I've prepared a montage of assembling these and a few Beyblade battles as well, which were a lot of fun, except for the one in which I yelled too hard for Dragoon to come out of the Beyblade and almost shat my pants. But before I show it to you, the montage, not my pants, I wanted to say two things. One, if you have a Bamboo Lab printer with AMS, you can print these in multicolor and customize these as much as you want, like this alt version of Dragoon. But if you don't have a multicolor printer, that's perfectly fine too, because you can just either print these in one color, or you can print a bunch of these in different colors and then mix and match your parts like this. 2. I have the Dragoon 3D print files available on my Patreon for absolutely free, but for the Black Dronzer files, you're gonna have to join a paid tier. Why, you may ask? Well, if I had enough time, maybe I could have come up with a half-decent soft story about how this will help me take on longer projects and offset material costs, but the truth of the matter is that I really, really, really want to steal your money. That's why. But anyway, the link is in the description. Okay, now here's the montage. That's about it for this one, please consider liking and subscribing if you want to see more stuff like this, and comment down below if you want to see me make more Beyblade kits or something else. As for other stuff, I highly recommend watching this video next, I think you're gonna like it. Bye! You and I, we are so random, you bring the darkness to the lights, play the atom, I ignore the fact that this will never last.